Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for March 3rd, 2024. Well, yesterday we had just a little bit of a rough day, another sell-off moving in, and um, still bond yields caught it, causing us a little bit of worry and concern. But let's take a look at what happened overnight. First off, if we take a look at um, Asian markets here, Asian markets were down across the board, kind of following the lead of the US, feeling a little bit of sell pressure there. Um, they also had um, a report that um, showing um, EV vehicles EV vehicles, uh, their demand um, falling um, apart just a little bit, some demand worries in there. So a little bit of selling over there yesterday. If we take a look at European markets here this morning, European markets are mixed but mostly higher here today. They had a inflation data point this morning showing that their inflation surprisingly declined uh, pretty strongly. So they're mostly bullish here this morning and Europe um, um, U.S. markets feeling just a little bit bearish this morning, but they have improved from the overnight lows. So if we take a look at our oil, oil is also a little bit higher this morning. Once again, with um, oil futures up and we're at 85 uh, 52 a barrel and Brent crude is at 89.36 a barrel heading toward 90 and natural gas is ever so slightly up just by a penny. If we take a look um, our gold um, this morning, gold continues to rise moving higher up another $10.90 an ounce. Silver is higher, copper is higher, platinum is higher and at this very moment palladium is just a little bit lower. It was slightly higher just a few moments ago and if we take a look at our cryptos, cryptos are also mixed this morning with Bitcoin. It, Bitcoin had a really rough day yesterday but is up this morning at least at this moment up 48 points so we'll want to keep an eye on that. Our bonds continue to show a little bit of pressure here. The two-year bond holding steady at 4.70 um, percent while our 10-year bond is up at 4.36 percent and the 30-year bond also up at 4.51 percent. So what does all that mean for today? Well how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Let's try to shake off some bias. Let's look at the charts for what they are, not for what they want them to be, and see how we might want to approach the market for today. Well first off, let's take a look at the diamonds here. As you can see, we had a pretty substantial gap down here in the chart and that broke this level of price support here. So a little bit of pressure in the market with a gap above now. And one of the things we want to remember is the first bit of sell-off in a market usually isn't all that important. It may be painful for traders that were a little bit um, too aggressively long on that initial sell-off, but what always occurs is that initial sell-off, no matter where it ends, if it ends here, if it ends down here, if it ends down here, really doesn't matter nearly as much as the relief rally because if we were to find today some kind of relief rally to the upside if the bulls were to find inspiration today pushing up it's going to depend on the quality of that relief rally and how much energy there is if we push back up into this resistance in the chart and are unable to break through or go any further remember it's always the lower high in um, a chart where the real selling begins. And I'm not saying that's going to occur, but we always want to watch after that first sell off in the market. If we can't rally back through to the upside, that's where we run into some major problems. Now, taking a look, if those bulls do find inspiration today and they push back up, that would be our first test to see if we can break back through that resistance and start working to fill this gap. 
here in the chart. If we can push through there, notice we get these little candles right in here. That would be our next level to attack. And beyond that, we would come up here and see if we could fill that gap in the chart. Once we get through that gap, if we can fill that area, and assuming we can continue to maintain that um, strength of energy, then we're going to have to start dealing with this um, ugly bearish evening star pattern in this double top in the diamond. So as we start moving back up, we'll be start thinking about this downtrend um, break or this trend break here in the chart and those resistance levels up above. Now, if the bears were to continue to find inspiration today and the way the chart looks, it's certainly possible that that could be the case. Pushing on lower yesterday, we jumped down into here and we found this price support that I kind of laid out yesterday and said, watch this area if we do break this area of support. And then um, our next layer down, if we don't hold here, we're probably looking at coming back into this area of price support in the chart. So again, if we do find bearish inspiration, that would be a fairly substantial move possible to the downside. And remember, it's always best to find a good area of price support to bounce off of than kind of a something in mid air, because if we bounce off an area that doesn't have great price support, it tends to not last very long. But let's watch that here carefully in the Dow. If we take a look at our SPY, boy, oh, SPY, SPY um, also broke some trend and broke some support yesterday, leaving a gap behind. But it really doesn't look all that severe at this point in time. If you take a look, pretty good upside trend here. It's, but we've been holding this for a long time. And yeah, we gave it up yesterday, but not so much as to be a major concern in here. If those bulls can find inspiration today, then I would look for a retest up into that resistance area and that trend break to see if we can push back up into some of these areas filling that gap here that push back up in here does seem uh, possible and really with the the um, help of big tech it wouldn't take all that much effort if if tech um, decides to um, become seriously bought up today so watch that um, carefully here and then of course once we fill that gap well then we're really really close to a new all-time high breakout in the spy where we would run into a little bit of trouble is if those bulls cannot find that inspiration and we continue to show weakness here against this resistance and start turning back lower um, if we were to do that and the bears find inspiration here on the day and we lose this area a little area of price support in here that we caught yesterday and bounced off of then we're probably looking at an area down in here and then we start progressively moving lower in that um in those support levels in the chart and we start stepping down into here uh, the major support one of the major supports right down in here which would be a really big point move for the spy if we got down there right now no signs that that is the case looking at the qqq our NASDAQ also had kind of a rough day yesterday, gapping lower, but they did surge back at the end of the day, really pushing back up. Now, the critical thing for the back, for the move back to the upside is we're going to have to deal with this price resistance because we added in this layer here of consolidation, creating that price resistance, and then we broke this trend in the chart. So as we move back up, we need to first push back up through this area, filling that gap and hitting this um, area of resistance and being able to push through this double whammy of the, that resistance above and that downtrend. So this is a pretty big ask on the QQQ. We're gonna need some real good energy to push us back up through there. Of course, if we can, then every reason to believe that we're reaching out for all time highs in the NASDAQ. If for some reason those those bears were to find inspiration and we're unable to push on higher here in that chart, you'll notice that we came down into this area and we found that price support here. 
there's a lot of uh, price support just a little bit lower as well as you can see a lot of those tails coming down into that area this would be our next area to test if we break down through yesterday's low probably down into here and then after that point well we have some sketchy price support in here um, you can see it's really messy right here in this chart that would be the stronger a little bit stronger area price support so if we break down below these lows yeah it could get painful here in the nasdaq but right now um, no reason to believe that we're headed there just at the moment i think um, relief rally could be coming here soon as long as we don't get a pile on of some bad data and then if we take a look at our iwm well iwm also leaving that gap behind but more importantly it left this uh, kind of ugly pattern up here in um in the chart where we failed that resistance um, um, where we popped through that resistance and it, we tried to make it support we failed back through there really strengthening this area of resistance in the chart we also broke this little upside trend so pushing back up if the bulls find inspiration and notice we grab some of that price support right in here where i'd marked yesterday as that kind of secondary level to hold support now we need to push up and we've got to deal with this congestion area here in the chart and I would suggest there's a resistance area right through here someplace as we push back up we'll have to deal with that as we try to fill this gap to the upside and then once again we've got that double whammy uh, where we broke this upside trend and this big resistance area up here that we're going to have to deal with to try and pop on through that chart if um, or those uh, resistance levels if we continue to see bears showing pressure here and we react negatively here to this price resistance in the chart then our next level down i think is probably going to be right down in here before we come all the way back down to this bigger area price support in the chart and maybe falling through there um, you can see we've got a a ways to fall at that point in time we could come all the way back down into here there is a little bit of uh, support in the middle there um, that maybe we could hang our hat on let's take a look at our vix now our vix yesterday shot up pretty strongly ended up reversing and then bounced back up so taking a look in here we still have that situation here on our vix where we broke back above this little trending area in the chart holding in there around 14 and a half handles at the close and we ended up yesterday as we uh, pushed back in here we ended up holding this area of price support notice that we broke this downtrend as well so if the bulls find inspiration today we want to see this maybe pushing back down into this area and see if we can break this area of price support in this trend in the chart if we can break down through there well then we've got a gap that we could potentially fill pushing us back down into this area however if those bears were to continue engage uh, engaging here in the market and we hold this area well let's notice we've got some resistance areas up above here that we can be watching for and really the major one is right up here as you can see we came really really close yesterday on that gap down pushing us up here in that area so a stretch back up into here to test this area would not be out of the question if those bears were to engage let's take a look at our um, t2122 which is the four week new high new low ratio and you can see t2122 had a pretty good pullback yesterday we ended up closing right in there around the 50 percent area of t2122 so what does that mean well it means right now we're kind of straddling the fence um we've got about an equal 
opportunity for an upside move and a downside move. It's probably going to be data dependent here today and just realizing we've got a bunch of Fed speakers including Jerome Powell today. So expect a little volatility. We're kind of straddling that fence a little bit uncertain here in the market right now. So just watch that closely today. I think anything is possible. If we take a look at our T2108, yeah T2108 pulled back but I really don't think this is all that severe. If you'll notice we did break this little bit of a trend. If, if the bears were to continue to push down um, of course that would create some worry particularly I think if we break below 50% where 50% of the stocks now um, uh, are below if we push on down would be below our 40 day moving average that would probably raise a little fear but if we get a relief rally in here notice we've got some price support here in the chart so there's every reason to believe that we could catch a little relief and maybe even resume that upside trend so it's a little bit sketchy but i don't see it as a major problem just yet we need more follow through to the downside um, to really raise some concern here and i'm going to say the same for t2107 t2107 actually ended the day better than T2108 almost holding on to that um, upside trend in here and we've got some price support in that chart to be thinking about in there so although we have pulled back it's been a relatively controlled pullback it hasn't been really really strong there's still an awful lot a bullish confidence in the market so no major damage here just yet i will say however that we are up here in a very very frothy area t2107 so continuing to fail in here if the bears were to engage maybe catching some support down in here wouldn't hurt us at all but we will we will likely see a little bit of fear uh, come up in the market if that were the case and then if we look at our t21 Oh, one, the absolute breadth. Well, the breadth of the market declined, and that's a good thing. When I said controlled, the breadth falling yesterday on that ugly bearish selling would say that the energy wasn't in that to the sell side. We, we still have a very, very confident market. Um, and what we don't want to see, what we wouldn't want to see, if you are a bull in this market, is to see that breadth moving up on a sell wave. So far we haven't seen that um, in the market. So every reason to believe that we could catch some support down in here, catch a little bit of relief rally if the data helps us out. If we do happen to get some pile on here, um, what we want to watch for again is that expansion of that breadth. Now one of the things that um, I continue to mention here on the breadth side of things, we are in a blackout period and I think by the end of this week um, it's about 96% 97% of all stocks will be in that blackout period, which means no corporate buyback activity can be done. They can't do anything to really uh, push their stock around until we get through earnings. So we're reaching that point in time with this volatility that it's really possible that we could end up in a, in a choppy, congestioned, range-bound market as we wait for the next round of earnings, which will not start you know, for another couple of weeks here to really start ramping up into those earnings reports. So don't be too surprised if we end up in a little bit of a choppy zone here for a bit with breath being on the lighter side um, with corporate buybacks and corporate activities um, unable to help the market at all. Um, let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here this morning. Our economic calendar is something we're certainly going to um, have some data coming our way that could move us around a bit. We've got an OPEC meeting coming out today or starting today. We'll want to watch that whether or not they make decisions to uh, maybe increase production or, or decrease production that would be really impactful to our oil prices and overall the market. So watch that. We've got a motor vehicle number coming out today. 
Here we've got mortgage applications, our normal Wednesday mortgage applications. We've got an ADP report that will be coming out. This is private payrolls and they're expecting that to increase uh, by 150,000 private payroll. So once again, our jobs holding in there very strong. That's not helping out the Fed much here. Um, if our job numbers continue to hold real strong. If um, um, at that point we're gonna have Bauman speaking, we've got uh, PMI composite, ISM in here, we've got that petroleum status number that probably be one of the most important um, data points of the day considering our oil prices. And then we're going to slip into a bond auction and several Fed speakers. Now, Kugler will be after the bell, but uh, we've got Barr, Powell, and Goolsby here this afternoon. And of course, Jerome Powell being the one most likely to potentially move the market. So be prepared this afternoon for some volatility depending on how they sound. Are they gonna be sound hawkish? Are they gonna sound dovish? We'll have to wait and see. As we move forward into Thursday, you'll wanna keep in mind our normal um, activity here um, on Thursday. We're gonna get um, international trading goods and our uh, jobless claims, but before that we're going to get the challenger dot job cut report that we'll want to be paying attention to. We've got a natural gas and then really light day with just a bunch of Fed speak in here um, as we go through the afternoon. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at um, our earnings calendar here for today. In our earnings calendar, we've got a few things that we're gonna to wanna to be paying attention to, but not a lot of big notables here, uh, which is normal for this time of the uh, quarter. If we take a look at AYI, we'll be reporting this morning. That's the only one I have as a notable this morning. Keep an eye on that. It's kind of slipped this upside trend. It's been a very, very strong upside trend. Kind of slipped that a little bit. Not showing huge bullishness after its report this morning, but keep an eye on it. That can change really quickly here in this market. If we take a look this afternoon, we're going to hear from um, Levi Strauss, we've got RGP, we're going to hear from SLP, and we're going to hear from SPWH. Now I know looking at these, not exactly hugely notable or market moving reports, but again, that's normal for this time of the quarter. So kind of keep an eye on those later on this afternoon. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, everyone, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor, and that would be click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. And I want to apologize yesterday. My partner um, ended up sick. I was covering two trading rooms yesterday. And so I didn't get a chance to answer those comments yesterday. Kind of ran, ran through my normal break period where I can answer those. So um, thank you um, so much for everyone who does it. And I apologize that I didn't get to it um, yesterday. I should be back on task today unless something else blows up and I'll be answering those comments. Thank you everyone who does take the time. Let's um, take a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, remember folks that these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. You need to be very, very careful in this market. Um, we've just got a little bit of uncertainty going on here where, uh, well, we're just going to have to watch pretty closely. First off, um, maybe a little bit of self-interest in here, but these are good looking charts. Um, I want to let you know that I do have a bias on these. Um, APA, um, still looking pretty good in here, um, trying to move on up in this chart. I keep a close eye on that. APA still looking uh, pretty darn bullish for that upside move. But I would say that also about a lot of the energy stocks. You know, take a look at ExxonMobil, take a look at Valero Energy, take a look at um, Halliburton. Oh my goodness, um, energy is is super, super strong here and a lot of those things moving to the upside. And if we get some data today, 
that happen to, sh to show our supply is continuing to decline in the United States. There's every reason to believe that could continue to move up. And of course, the geopolitical situation out there adding additional upside pressure to all of those energy, um, energy um, names out there. So watch those closely. Now, if we take a little bit of a different look um, or some a different area of the market, take a look at LAC. Now, what we've been seeing here recently is an awful lot of mining and natural resource stocks, stocks moving sharply higher. Um, LAC has started this rally to the upside and notice we're holding in here on a trend. Now, once again, I have a bias on this because I am holding this trade. So kind of keep that in mind if you're evaluating this chart. But looking at this very, very bullish breakthrough of that resistance and holding up here we're coming into that trending area if we continue to see those uh, natural resources continue finding that bullish energy then watch for that next potential move here to the upside and press into this next area of resistance on lac and you know i gotta say when we start looking at some of these uh, mining stocks if we look at the gdx my goodness, they're strong. And take a look at stocks like um, Newmont Mining. Very beautiful bullish pattern. Resting just a little bit here the last couple of days. If this rests back to trend, look for those next opportunities in there. Just a lot of mining stocks um, looking very, very strong, very bullish. So keep an eye on those. Even things um, like Alcoa, aluminum being very strong pushing through some resistance here in the chart a rester pullback would set up an opportunity there if we take a look at uh, copper um, fcx uh, copper miner very bullish here strong to the upside showing lots of strength so i would keep a close eye on those if that can if that pressure continues to um, push these stocks higher they're looking just really good um, um, so watch those carefully and then if we take a look at some of our food commodities here take a look at wheat it's been pushing up toward this downtrend resistance in the chart but notice this little upside trend in here we've got some price resistance here to deal with as well but if we were to pop up through here and hold then I'm looking for wheat to potentially move on higher. If we look at um, corn, corn has already made that move up through this resistance and broke the downtrend. Struggling here along this support area of the chart. But again, if we continue to see um, some uh, things, all this movement in the dollar could either help these or hurt these dramatically. So watch the US dollar. But keep an eye on these. They're continuing to show um, a little bit of upside pressure. And if we look at things like DBA, DBA, unbelievably strong. And we take a look at the Mu ETF, which is an ag-related ETF, showing lots of strength back up here to the next resistance level. I'd be keeping an eye on those as well. And this includes things along the lines of John Deere. If we take a look at John Deere, breaking through resistance here in the chart, trying to rest and pull back, maybe find that trend. I would keep an eye on that. Take a look at Cummins. Cummins, also bull, very bullish chart, moving through um, some resistance in this nice little resting pattern in here. I would be watching this for that pop out and additional extension here on Cummins. Take a look at um, Caterpillar. Caterpillar doing the same thing. Very, very strong in that upside move. Nice little resting pattern here. Set your price alert. Wait for that to pop through if we can continue to show that bullishness here in some of these ag-related industrial um, stocks out there. And I'm even going to say it might be time to start keeping an eye on Boeing. Now, Boeing's had obviously just lots and lots of bad news here in the market, but you can see we broke this downtrend here again. We're trying to hold, trying to hold a little bit of higher low in here. If we can catch a little buying coming in here, 
that might be that opportunity to pick up some Boeing um, in that chart. So watch that closely. So with that, guys, there's there's a few stocks for you to look at today. I don't want to go too long. I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Thanks so much for listening and being here and being part of the um, the. Um, morning market prep video I'm, I'm humbled every day when i see these comments and and folks spent a little bit of their time with me um, around breakfast so um, means the world to me thank you so much everyone take care have a wonderful day and i will see you right back here bright and early thursday morning wishing you all the very, very best